So the next we're going to hear about um, rehabilitation and how important it is. Um, I broke my wrist the night before COVID shut down. The last dance at my granddaughter's wedding, I fell and I broke my wrist. And I had a cast on for, I think, six weeks. And when I got the cast off, I said to the doctor, do I need any kind of rehab or physical therapy? And he said, no, nah, I just move your arm around a little bit. Well, I could barely lift my, my wrist this far. And I insisted on getting physical therapy. And I went to physical therapy religiously three times a week. And now, as you can see, I can lift my wrist all the way up. I truly believe if I hadn't had that physical therapy, that that wouldn't happen. I see what happens to someone after the fall who does not do rehab, who does not exercise. You know, I always say if you rest, you rust and you need to uh, move to lube. So right now we have a little presentation about this. So sit back, check it out and tell me what you think. I can't do this live, so hopefully this will still serve as a good presentation for all that are attending. Uh, and with that, I'll get started. Uh, this presentation I'm giving is actually a presentation that the American Physical Therapy Association uh, with a specialty in geriatrics has, uh, has conducted and put on. I have their permission to use this. Um, so just FYI, that's where the source material is coming from. Some of the objectives of today's presentation are to understand the impact of falls on older adults or seniors and to be able to recall at least three factors that increase fall risk and also to um, assess the uh, the risk factors using this CDC tool. Now this tool is a little bit outdated so um, this won't necessarily apply exactly as stated here but um, I can share with you just what uh, what the link is or what the reference is here and I think it'll be good for for those out in the community as an additional resource. Also, we wanna at least, uh, again, two resources available to them in the community to prevent falls, and we can, we can provide that here during the presentation and also to identify when it is appropriate to access physical therapy services in relation to, ball, to balance and falls issues. So the prevalence of falls, I think that we're all very well aware that falls is a very prevalent specifically among older adults. Every year, roughly 3 million older adults are treated in the ER for fall-related injuries. And this accounts for about $50 billion annually. Um, you can see here also that uh, roughly one second, there is a fall that occurs in an older, an older adult every day. And out of those, one in four um, is reported in, in older adults. The data on here is back to 2014, but the data is only increasing. It's actually getting more and more, the prevalence of falls. Uh, they are the number one cause of hip fractures in older adults also. The average hospital cost of a fall is approximately $30,000. Um, this doesn't even account for the disability and the dependence on others the lost time from work and household duties and, and reduced quality of life, which is obviously something that we can't put a number on. But if you were to add all these things up, the number would obviously exponentially uh, increase from there. Um, fall death rates have increased roughly 30% also from the time period of 2007 to 2016. Uh, we, we continue to see falls increase because people are living longer. So this is really the, the main factor that we're seeing falls and associated fall injuries increasing in the United States. You can see also on this slide that uh, the projection um, to the year 2030 that we'll see even a, a, a wider increase of falls. And again, that's just because um, our, our age is, is extended. Our, 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 we're living longer than we ever have. Um, so this number is only gonna continue to go up. So. Again, identifying areas that we can uh, use to prevent or mitigate falls and fall-related injuries is uh, critically important within our 
within our older adult and senior population. And I know I can't see everybody because <laughs> we're doing this virtually, um, but you know I, I'm sure everybody knows someone who's suffered from a fall. I think we've all experienced something like that. Now, if you ask yourself, how many of those falls had a life-changing issue as a result of that fall? I can certainly name many. Just uh, you know, anecdotally, with between relatives and friends, the fear of falling. This is another thing that. Um, you know, we 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 see that's very prevalent out there with a, a lot of our, our elder community is is the the fear and falling of itself. Potentially, some of you guys listening to the presentation today have suffered a fall, and maybe you've had some life changing issues, whether it's you yourself or someone you've known. A true or false. A fall only counts when you hit the ground. This is false. This is one of those areas where I think a lot of people would say true, but a fall does not mean you have to hit the ground itself. You can fall into anything. You fall into a chair, into a wall, into a bed, etc. That is considered a fall. It's not true. But here is the actual definition of a fall. A fall is defined as an event that leads to an unplanned, unexpected contact with the supporting surface. It refers to even falling into a chair or wall and not the ground. A fall is not the result of a push or shove, a medical event, passing out, suffering a stroke, et cetera. So no single event cause the fall, no injury has to be sustained. The fall is an unintentional loss in balance that leads to failure of postural stability or sudden and unexpected change in positioning, which usually results in landing on the floor. But again, it doesn't have to be the floor. So that's another um, definition of a fall. We have also what's called a recurrent faller, which is somebody who's had two or more times within a six to 12 month period that person would be classified as a recurrent faller. There are four types of falls according to the Hopkins Falls Grading Scale, grade one, two, three, and four. A grade one is from the least severe or severity to a grade four, which is the highest severity. A grade one simply means a near fall. It's a slip, a trip, a loss of balance. You didn't fall to the ground, so you never made contact with anything, the chair, the wall, the ground. A grade two is a, is a fall. You felt the ground or you lowered or any kind of a lower level. For example, a chair, a bench, something like that. Uh, but you didn't have to receive medical attention. It was, uh, you know, there was no injury caused in that fall. A grade three fall is you fell to the ground or a lower level, et cetera, like a chair or a bench, like I just mentioned. But in this case, you did receive medical attention. You just were not admitted to the hospital. So it was a little more severe. And a grade four fall is a fall to the ground or lower level, but you were admitted to the hospital. So again, this goes from grade one being the least severe to grade four being the most severe. Physical consequences of a fall. In older adults who fall, the following can occur. A hip fracture, which again, I was mentioned earlier in the presentation. Um, this is the, the number one injury that occurs with falls. Um, second here is a loss of mobility at about 20, almost 21% a loss of independence at roughly 14%, depression at 10%, arm injuries from you know, falling out stretch to try to prevent the fall or, or mitigate the injury, that accounts for about 6%. And then death, you can see that death has a very high um, occurrence of, of what can happen with an older adult who has a fall. So these are, uh, you know, must be taken seriously. And again, the prevention of falls is, is really critical to the kind of point of this discussion. We talked about fear of falling uh, a couple of slides ago. The fear of falling is a lasting concern about falling that may cause a person to stop doing activities. Fear she remains able to do. Are you afraid of falling? You limit or, or avoid activities you used to do to be more careful. 
the fear of falling increases fall risk. So this is a problem. The fear of falling in and of itself is a problem. If you have a person that, for instance, doesn't want to go to the store or church anymore and stays in most of the time because they're concerned that they'll slip on something, they'll fall on something, so they limit their activities and their social interaction, that fear can cause a reduction in balance and strength and all those things, um, social interaction, as mentioned. So that is a, a problem in and of itself. So again, the big takeaway is hopefully we can try to have a better understanding of what causes a fall, how we can prevent those falls, and that will mitigate that fear of falling itself. Past falls are also a risk for additional falls. You can see uh, once we have the, the fall itself, that that can then cause the fear of falling, which we just mentioned is a problem in and of itself. Then that fear of falling causes the fear of moving, then causes decreased activity within that individual, which can lead to increased weakness and other issues, balance, et cetera. So it's a, it's a cycle. So if we can prevent that initial fall, we can prevent this whole uh, cycle from happening, hopefully. Why does that fear of, of falling matter? Well, it can stop a, a person from doing some of their favorite activities. You may stop going to a certain class that you did at the YMCA or a group activity that you did within your community. Your legs can weaken from this activity, or sorry, from less activity. You can cause you to feel depressed or lonely. Again, there's that social interaction piece. Um, if you're not able to, to attend things with, with friends and with others in the community, you're becoming more isolated, and, and that's, a, that's a problem in and of itself also. So all of these will increase your risk of falling. Again, I know I can't see everybody's hands, but you know, the definition of a fall different than what you thought it was. <clears throat> I'm sure a lot of people would say yes. And then does this change your answer on if you've fallen in the past year? Because again, a fall isn't necessarily just hitting the floor. It's a potential loss of balance. It's, it's falling into a chair or a wall or another object or something to a lower level. This is a really important one. Did you tell your primary care provider? We never want to hide when we have things like this. I know it can be embarrassing or um, a pride issue to talk about, you know, or a loss of balance or falls, uh, you know, things like that with your uh, with your primary caregiver or sorry, provider um, or or other medical personnel. And we have to make sure that we're open and and discuss things like that so that we can seek out the best interventions, treatment, et cetera. To address the to address the problem, and do you feel unsteady when standing or walking? That would be a, 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 obviously a, um, a precursor to potentially falling if you do feel unsteady when you're standing or walking. And it, again, did you know that a previous fall increases your future fall risk? We talked about the cycle of when you have a fall, it leads to fear of falling and fear of walking than everything else. So it's a, a big snowball effect. True or false, falls are a normal part of aging. Hopefully everybody knows that that is false. Fall, falling is not a normal part of aging and it's the result of abnormal aging. So not a normal part, it's, I would say it's an abnormal part of aging. Just because we get older does not mean that we should potentially be falling more. True or false, falls are preventable. Hopefully everybody knows that that is true. The research does show that a large majority of falls can be prevented. Roughly 60 to 75% of falls can be prevented. They're experienced by many older adults. Uh, a common experience is managing fall risk is you know a normal part of aging. However, falls themselves are not a normal part of aging. So now let's discuss some risk factors for falls. We have modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors. 
your modifiable risk factors are risk factors that, that can be easily changed or modified. So these are things kind of within our control that we can adjust to or change. And non-modifiable risk factors are risk factors that cannot be easily changed or modified. They are things that we cannot have control over or adjust. Your non-modifiable risk factors, or again, those things that we cannot change are your age. Obviously, I know we'd all love to be able to adjust that or change that, but we can't. <laughs> your history of, of previous falls, um, a female gender, Polypharmacy, which just means you're taking more than four medications at a time. Poor vision. Now, you can technically optimize your vision by wearing the right corrective lenses, things like that. But poor vision in and of itself is a non-modifiable risk factor. Some continued non-modifiable risk factors. Poor feeling in feet or legs, so a sensation issue. Maybe somebody that has diabetes or some kind of impaired sensation. Ethnicity, uh, white Asian actually have a larger percentage in African American or Hispanic. Chronic disease diagnoses and memory deficits such as Alzheimer's. Those are all non-modifiable risk factors. Now let's talk about the modifiable risk factors. The internal risk factors would be phys physical inactivity, leg weakness, poor balance, improper use of cane or walker, medication issues in or errors, low blood pressure when changing positions or orthostatic hypertension, poor vision uh, care or correction, fear of falling, depression, and social isolation. So again, these are modifiable risk factors that we can address to a degree. We can, we can improve some of these things. We can improve our, our leg weakness, our balance, our activity levels, et cetera. So those were the internal risk factors that were modifiable, and these are the external risk factors that are modifiable. Stairs, um, uneven or not having rails. Trip hazards, so these are kind of kind of goes along with the one below this, was unsecured throw rugs, but trip hazards could be similar things. You could have um, electrical cords lying out, et cetera. Um, a lack of grab bars in the bathroom. Low chairs, toilets, or sofas. So these are all things that we could potentially modify within our home environment if we need to. Some more external risk factors, poor lighting, cabinets and storage, not easy to reach. There's ways that we can um, you know, have better ergonomics and, and have things placed in areas where we can reach them or obtain them easier. Uh, narrow doorways and or paths that limit the use of needed assistive devices and uneven or wet surfaces. So how can you prevent a fall? <clears throat> you really need to know your risk factors. That's that's pretty critical for um, for you to understand how you how you know you can work on these things. How can you adjust modifiable risk factors? How do you know how much of a risk you are because of those non-modifiable risk factors, that's critical to understand for yourself. Um, there is a, uh, again, there's a brochure that was mentioned in the presentation, which um, the, the link is active with the, the brochure. There's some pictures of it in here. I can send this out in a different link um, to Linda and the group, but um, we'll keep moving for time sake here. But I'll make sure you have that as a resource available. This is a, an image of what the brochure or the website looks like. Um, it's through the CDC, so it's a, it's, you know, a, a very formal um, evaluation process that you can use to see where you kind of stand as far as your risk factors. So you see that it has a, a long list of yes or no statements. What's nice here on the right is it also shows you why it matters. And then you have the total, and that can kind of give you uh, um, an idea of where you stand. And here you can also see that it says, you know, you can kind of share this information with your physician. And how can I prevent a fall? Four things you can do to prevent falls. Have your health care provider review your medicines. Remember, we talked about 
polypharmacy or having multiple medications is a risk factor. Exercises to improve your balance and strength. Uh, obviously, balance, strength, those are two main ingredients to, to maintaining a um, healthy posture, healthy body, and reducing falls. Having your eyes checked and feet checked. We talked about the vision and the, um, and the sensation within your lower extremities. And make your home safe. We want to make sure we reduce some of those risk factors in the home, like the, the lighting, um, the potential trip um, uh, hazards, et cetera. Check early, don't wait for a fall to occur. You wanna address any factors that place you at a risk for falls. Um, again, those modifiable ones are obviously something we can address and we need to work on. If you have a change in your movement ability, make sure you consult a physical therapist immediately. Uh, as I stated in, in the opening, I am a PT by background and I can tell you that there's a myriad of different um, treatment interventions that we can provide to address a lot of these areas, specifically your balance and strength, but also also tips and guidelines to make sure you do have a safe environment. Now, all those risk factors you can change today. So we have different types of risk factors. Some we some we can change, some we cannot, as mentioned. But it's it's hard to improve those risk factors. If, it can be hard, sorry, to improve some of the risk factors even that we can change. Have your medication reviewed by a pharmacist. This goes back to the issue of taking multiple medications can really be an issue um, for, uh, for the older adult population. So having a pharmacist review that, make any potential changes or recommendations would be uh, really beneficial. Be more active. Try not to be isolated. Try to do things with your friends. Uh, always encourage, um, uh, you know, older adults to seek out different groups within the community. Uh, I think doing things as a group is always a much more engaging activity and, and doing it with a friend. That's going to really make sure that you try to stick to that and stick to it consistently. It's always harder to go about something alone, especially something like this. Make your home safer. I think this one is one of the one of maybe I would say the easiest in the sense that we know what those issues. Once we identify what those issues are within the home, you can address them. If you know that you have a cord that's in a, an area that would potentially be a trip hazard, find the solution. Remove the cord. Find another way to, to plug that object in. If you have a throw rug that's unsafe, remove the rug. I think these are things that can be really immediately corrected and, um, and used to improve your, your, your safety in your home. And optimize vision and footwear. The footwear has to do with, if you have any issues with, um, with sensation in your lower extremity, this will, this will really help to, uh, to try to mitigate those issues. You know, the, the CDC also has what they call stay independent. It's a, this is a brochure that the CDC used to have. It focuses on four main things that you can do to prevent falls. And these are a lot of the things that it talks about. Exercising and increasing your daily activity to improve your balance and strength, making your home safer, having your, your vision, feed, and footwear checked, and having your, your doctor or pharmacist review your medicines. So these, these are also recommending. And also, talking to your, your doctor before starting an exercise program. Um, physical therapists are, are people who specialize in improving function, strength, and balance. And, and if you don't feel like you can do a, a group exercise class or if that's not right for you and you want to do an individualized program, I would see a physical therapist. Um, that That's that's who's really going to, and you do need to see your doctor first. You need to get a prescription for that, that physical therapy, but they are really going to be able to help you address all those uh, issues that, that, that you have with the potential fall. And make sure we sit less and move more and find something you enjoy doing. Again, if we don't have a, an activity that's fun or engaging, it's going to be much harder to commit to that activity and to do that long term. So uh, always want to make sure that we 
uh, are able to participate in something that we know we can we can do it for the long run. It's not just a short-lived thing. And obviously something as important as this preventing falls, um, this would be critical for you to stick with. And we discussed having a, a physical therapist potentially um, provide some kind of individualized treatment if you are, have got to that level where you need some really clinical uh, intervention versus just participating in a, in a group class or something in a community. That physical therapist is going to be your subject matter expert and really walk you through um, everything that you need to do. And again, just stick with it. It's really something you gotta you gotta find a passion for, find something you know you can commit to, and that that'll be the way that you're sure you get the results you need. Participate in an evidence baseball prevention program. So this this goes back to being part of a of a community, whether it's a community center, a senior care center. Um, some kind of a program that you have it's got research back to it it shows that it's it's been able to prevent falls in the community uh that's uh that, that would be important too some environmental recommendations this goes into our creating that safe environment with our home we want to identify and eliminate fall hazards in your home and community so want to remove potential fall hazards from walkways stairs uh, those throw rugs, any any kind of any kind of potential trip hazard or fall hazard, we want uh, we want rugs to be secured safely to the floor. Um, we want to place frequently used items on a lower shelf, a cabinet or a counter, to avoid using the step, stool, or ladder. This is something that we see um, too often as somebody tries to get on a, a ladder or a stool to reach an object that is out of their reach, and they lose their balance and they fall. And then that's when that hip fracture or something terrible could potentially happen. We want to keep those frequently used items on a, on a level where we don't have to get on an object to get them. We don't have to try to stand on our tippy toes. It's something that we can we can easily reach. There's a, a lot of hazard checklists available. And they generally guide you through your home room by room and help you to identify potential hazards. Um, there's again more on the CDC. This check for safety that you see on the slide here is from the CDC, a home fall prevention checklist for older, older adults. Um, it will ask you, you know, do you have all these things? And then the recommendation will be to remove this or double or, or use double sided tape or non slip packing on those rugs so they won't slip if they need to stay there. So there's some really good advice through the CDC and, and this specifically. Another thing to mention is uh, we talked about physical therapy, but an occupational therapist can also help you identify safety issues in your home and provide individualized solutions um, based on your abilities and your needs. So uh, an occupational therapist or OT is trained to look at safety dangers or things inside and outside your home that may cause you to fall, and then they can give you suggestions to reduce those possible fall risks. So an OT would also follow up with you after any medications remain in your home and make sure you can use any new equipment or changes in the environment uh, safety. So the same process would work for an OT referral. You would just want to talk to your physician first, and then they would hopefully be able just to prescribe you um, the order to go see an occupational therapist if it's necessary. Here's a checklist that we were just kind of talking about, the check for safety CDC checklist. So here's some of the things you'll see that they would ask for. Here's your stairs and steps. So these are one of those external, well, all of these technically fall under those external modifiable risk factors that we can adjust for, we can change, we can, we can modify to our environment. You can see they ask questions about stairs and steps, floors, kitchen, this is a lot about the you know things on shelves within the right place, bedrooms, bathrooms, bathrooms focuses on the, the tub or shower safety. Envision and falls risk. Make sure you guys are getting a, a yearly eye exam after the age of 50. 
Uh, it, it's very important to have at least one IgM done every year, especially if you have vision problems from diabetes, glaucoma, macular degeneration, cataracts, any of those eye problems, you need to see your, your eye doctor more than one time a year. Your, your fall risk may decrease if you follow your eye doctor's recommendation to have cataract surgery, for example. Um, you know, but you have to be careful because falls can increase after a, a cataract surgery due to the change in vision. You just want to be cautious as you adjust. Uh, but the, the point of this is still to make sure you're addressing all of those vision needs. We talked about how vision is in and of itself or vision is a non-modifiable risk factor. But if you address your vision correctly, then that can improve your, your chance of reducing falls. The bifocals or trifocal lenses, they can blur sometimes or distort your vision looking down, especially when you first start wearing bifocals, trifocal, or even a progressive lens. It'll take you some time to adjust how you need to hold your head to see clearly. That's uh, particularly true when you're going up or down steps or curves. So you may want to hold on to someone's arm or use a hammer every time you go up or down steps or curves. If there isn't something like that available or someone to hold on to, we'll look around to see if there's a ramp you could use or if there, maybe there's another way to get to where you want to go. And if it still seems difficult after then you think you've gotten used to the glasses, maybe consider wearing two sets of glasses for reading and for distance, you know, versus the uh, progressive lenses, particularly for use on the stairs or when you go, uh, when you get up at night. And, and really, regardless of your vision, use night lights in your bathrooms and hallways at night. That's always going to decrease your risk of falls if you get up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, having those night lights there. We kind of already discussed that if you have cataracts removed, that, that can reduce your fall risk. And then use, your, use those night lights. You, you really need to have those in place, regardless of your your vision issues, we should have night lights in place uh, in the hallway and in the back. We discussed that if you have potential problems with your feet, such as such as sensation, that that can um, potentially increase your risk of falls. So what else about the shoes and feet? Well, if your shoes don't fit well, that could be a potential issue. Um, if the soles of your shoes don't have enough tread and it presents a slippery surface, that obviously could be an issue. Um, or if you wear socks around the house, socks only without shoes, again, that could be a potential slip issue. So always wear good sole slippers around the house. If you're you know, gonna walk around, get socks on, put them in a slipper with, with, a, good, with a good sole that, that isn't, um, you know, that's rubbery and has some traction. And you may want to see your podiatrist about a, a foot or shoe problems that would decrease your fall risk also. We discussed being on four medications or more, which is considered uh, the definition of polypharmacy, that that would increase your risk of falls. Um, some medications can, can cause fall risk directly. They have side effects such as dizziness, unsteadiness. Uh, they can make you sleepy or tired. So again, this is where you need to speak with your doctor or pharmacist to, to see if any other things are available without those side effects. And, and you want to use the same pharmacy slash pharmacist or physician when discussing your, your medication interventions. You, you don't want to talk to multiple healthcare providers um, that can kind of get confused. You want to make sure you're sticking to that same person so they know all the medications are on, all the, all the medication interactions, uh, et cetera. These are the slide effects we just discussed and how they can increase your fall risk. Use the one pharmacy and uh, ask for an annual medication review because things do change. Your body can change. So you want to make sure you're doing this on an annual basis and then read your labels so that you're aware as a consumer um, what what are the potential side effects because you know what those things are you know what to watch out for and even over-the-counter medications those are something that we would always encourage you to discuss with your pharmacist um, especially when you're taking multiple medications and over-the-counter medication could have some kind of counteraction with uh, another medication so so running that through your pharmacist would be beneficial 
walkers, canes, and falls. Oh my. But at least half of older adults who use a cane or walker were, were never measured for the fit or trained properly on use, whether it was through a, a physical therapist or uh, anybody um, trained to, to show somebody how to use that, that assistive device properly. A lot of times canes or walkers are just purchased at a store and that individual thinks that it's set up right for them and it certainly could not be. Um, you can see that 75% of those who fell were not using the prescribed cane or walker at that time. So the, that's a very large percentage of, of falls. 75% um, weren't using the cane or walker again described at that time. They were using either something else, not using anything at all, um, or maybe, maybe they were just using it incorrectly. But this is uh, this is something that is is important. And again, a a physical therapist could certainly help you with. Um, understanding the, the proper way to use your assistive device. Uh, they will measure it for you and how, where, where and when it should be used um, and assure that, that you have the understanding of, of the rationale as to why you're using that device. So if you're supposed to be using a cane or walker, make sure you don't leave your house without it. Don't use the walls, furniture, or countertops for balance. This is what your assistive device is for. So don't please don't use your you know anything that you see the walls furniture countertops those things aren't meant for that you could always grab a piece of furniture like a chair and it could tip over and that means you're tipping over with it please don't do that and these words strength balance fear of falling they're not four letter words they don't have to be this this uh, negative connotation. Um, you know, we, there are things we can do to address that. Again, these are those modifiable risk factors. So these are things that we can actively do whether within our control to change. Uh, leg strength can certainly be improved to decrease fall risk. You know, if you have a hard time going up the stairs or getting up on a toilet or a chair without using your arms, you probably do need to strengthen your legs. So there's some pretty reasonable and, and simple exercises that can improve strength and balance. And again, this is what a physical therapist could really help you. And if you're not getting the desired benefits from going to some kind of group activity uh, or community uh, community activity or, or something similar, uh, balance can be improved to decrease fall risk also. And we know if you feel unsteady when you're walking or you just seem to lose your balance for no reason, you probably do need to improve your balance. We discussed the, the different levels of need here, depending on, on how severe your uh, your deficits are, or if you're not getting enough need or, or outcomes, I should say, through the community community based programs. Uh, then then that's time to go see your physical therapist and get individualized one on one treatment. Some other issues that can impact the fall would be your blood pressure. Having your blood pressure checked regularly is very important. Uh, you want to speak with your doctor about how often you do check your blood pressure. If you get dizzy when you stand up, you see your doctor and have and have your sit to stand blood pressure checked. So this is kind of checking for that orthostatic hypertension. Uh, after sitting up in the bed, you wait a few minutes before standing. You can pump your ankles before getting up to, to get the blood moving. Those are just some things you can do to help. So there's some blood pressure medication um, that that will increase your fall risk. Um, so you got to be really careful about that and make sure you you know consulting with your physician. There is blood pressure medications and, and cardiac medications that will initially cause you some dizziness as you change positions. So for the first two to three weeks after starting a new medication, be especially careful to get up slowly. Do those ankle pumps. Move your legs out to three before standing up. Then stay standing until you're no longer dizzy before you walk. Don't start walking until that dizziness has resolved. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to start ambulating or walking if you're still feeling that dizziness. That is obviously going to potentially be a recipe for disaster. So the risk of falling may change with your change in medication. 
obviously it can certainly change with your changes in health or an illness or an infection. If you have um, any kind of, of new onset or illness, uh, that can change your pain levels. Um, <clears throat> also lack of sleep, you know, that can increase if you're tired or having ongoing sleeping problems. Uh, if you're sad, if you're worried or anxious. If you have a reduced activity level or, or bed rest delays, maybe come week and increase your falls. A risk of falling also contributes to that cycle of inactivity, weakness, and increased uh, risk of falls. Change in the use of a cane or walker. As we mentioned, if you're not using devices uh, as, as, as indicated um, or not using them at all, that's going to significantly increase your chance of falls. A change in vision. That's why we want to make sure that you are seeing your um, your physician, uh, your optometrist, whoever it is, at least annually or more. If you have a vision issues, and if you move to a new home, because as we said, there are many environmental risk factors that we uh, need to be cognizant about in the home. So anytime you move to a new physical location, you need to slowly. Uh, learn and understand your environment. It may even, even be helpful to go to the bathroom at night on a schedule. Um, so you kind of know and get used to things. And again, have those those uh, those night lights handy in the bathroom and the hallway. And and what should you do if uh, a fall occurs? The first thing you want to do is check for an injury or a serious medical condition. You don't want to try to get up if you think you hurt something, if you've broken your hip, uh, et cetera. You would want to call for help. That would be that would be what you want to do. Uh, if you think that you hit your head or you, you know you hit your head, you want to seek medical attention right away. Um, this is this is very important, uh, especially if you're on we have a lot of old, older adults on blood thinner medication. So that uh, presents an even more serious risk if you fall and hit your head. You want to call your doctor if you can. Um, check for safety hazards to prevent another fall. This is this is after the fact. So, uh, and, and also after the fact, you would need to report whatever safety hazard you observed to the appropriate person, like a family member. Uh, maintenance, housekeeping, if you live in a complex or um, an assisted living facility or something like that, uh, or any kind of staff in order to fix that hazard so it does not happen again. And then please use that physical therapist if you need to. They can teach you how to safely get up from the floor. That's an actual intervention that a physical therapist can do. They can show you the, the proper way to get off the floor, the safe way to get off the floor if you have a fall. And just to summarize, older adults are at an increased risk for falling. You want to make sure to discuss your fall risk and prevention plan with your health care provider. And that could include your pharmacist, your physician, uh, several people, a physical therapist, et cetera. And risk can be modified. So that's why it's important to know your risk. Uh, check your home for safety. Discuss your risk factors with your medical doctor or physical therapist. Have your eyes checked a minimum once per year and exercise, be active, do as much as you can to improve your balance and strength and keep those things up. It's very critical. And just getting started, this is, you know, kind of trying to tackle one thing at a time. It's kind of overwhelming to, to do everything. So here's just an example of getting started. You choose one risk factor to address first. A pharmacist and a doctor or physician, they can review the medications for side effects that may cause you to fall an occupational therapist or OT that can provide that home assessment and recommendations to make your home safer. And a physical therapist or PT can help with physical activity, balance, strength, and moving safely. And the PT and OT can, can kind of overlap with some of the things they can do so they can kind of help um, each other. There. Now we've got to make the plan. So what do you do what is your plan to prevent that fall? You can make a goal. So here's kind of next steps. If you're 
if you're somebody that has a lot of these risk factors. And I would say, start by going to the CDC and taking that, that test to kind of show you what your risk factors are. So once you determine what your risk factors are, then you know how to follow up and address those things. So if you see that you have a, 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 an area, whether it's your home or whether it's medication or whatever it is, then you know how to follow up with that. Just some examples is that you can make an appointment with your pharmacist by the end of the week to get your medications checked. Uh, you and a friend could start an exercise program and do it twice a week at the local senior center. You could do a home safety checklist by the end of the month, and you could also share your falls risk questionnaire with your doctor by the end of the week. Just a reminder to, to move more. And with that said, I will go ahead and and uh, leave it there. Again, I apologize that I could not be there in person to answer any questions or take, uh, take any questions. Uh, I'll make sure I get the information, the link for the CDC over to, uh, uh, to Linda to get those out to everybody that is registered for the program. And uh, thank you very much for your time today. Take care now. And here we are back. So I really appreciate Mark making that video and sending us to ahead of time because of all of the, the issues with the weather and everything.